Okay, this is a pretty stream of consciousness video, and I haven't really set up anything here to hide the mess or anything. I just wanted to kind of make this video because I've got a couple of buddies in the uh, prog rock video community. Uh, you may have seen me on one of their videos as part of their prog rock uh, roundtable panel. Uh, I really feel like I need to justify my existence there by putting out more of these videos. Um, you know, normally I'd be doing like a ranting review of something, a very stream of consciousness, no script, having uh, a lot of trouble actually coming up with words for things, but tonight I want to tackle something else, and I've seen some comments on friends' channels before talking about, uh, specifically some reaction videos, um, I'm not gonna say whose channel, cause... I mean, if you've seen the videos that I'm a part of with the Prog Rock Roundtable crew, uh, you probably know who it is I'm talking about already. And if not, you know, I don't want to contribute to their problem by making you aware, oh, they have a reaction channel, I should go harass them. But this has come up on some other videos as well. And it's just this general attitude towards younger prog rock fans. And I'm, I'm using the term younger pretty loosely because I'm pushing 40 years old myself. Uh, these guys are up in their 30s. A couple of the guys in the prog rock round table are definitely above 40. <laughs> uh, but we're not exactly spring chickens ourselves. You know, we're... We've grown up with a lot of classic rock and classic prog in our lives. Uh, usually we're the ones carrying it over from our parents. But there's just this whole attitude and comments of, like, y you young people don't get progressive rock. And, you know, you're right, we weren't there when Close to the Edge and 2112 were released. We weren't there when Genesis with Peter Gabriel came to your city and played your concert. We weren't alive then. But we've seen the footage, we've bought the albums, we've appreciated the music, we've appreciated the aesthetic, we've allowed ourselves to become influenced by it, we've allowed ourselves to grow from it. Some of us have discovered this music pretty early on in our life. Some of us found out through people your age, our parents, my dad listen to a lot of Pink Floyd and Rush, and you're damn straight. That shit was playing on our car stereo on road trips all the time. I knew every single word to, like, Super Tramp's Breakfast in America before, before I even hit puberty, you know? These are, this is music we all grew up on. Maybe we weren't adults ourselves. Some of us weren't even alive when this music was first released. But we understand it all the same. And a lot of us have a pretty long history of it. A lot of us have studied it. And I know studying things, like reading about it secondhand, isn't the same as experiencing it firsthand. But we still appreciate what we've learned. We've still taken a lot from it. We understand the music. We're influenced by it. We love it. We enjoy it. And even if we're not old enough to get it the way you do, we still get it on our own terms. And a part of it is we want to keep this tradition alive. We want to keep music like progressive rock alive and... Even if we can't get it back into the mainstream, at least keep it relevant enough that people will want to continue to discover it. I mean, my own stepkid knows Roundabout. Sure, they learned it from a meme in an anime series, and th they don't understand it on the same level that I do. You know, they they didn't go out to a record store and buy Fragile and put it on the platter and, holy crap, that's roundabout. But they heard it. 
and they appreciated it. And they they went out, found the song, and it's something that they enjoy now. And good for them. They are enjoying it on their own terms. And this is something that we have to kind of remember when newer generations come and look at the music and look at the media that we all grew up on. They're going to discover it on their own terms. They're going to find out about it their own way. And they're going to come to appreciate and love it on their own terms. And they might love and appreciate it alongside stuff that we're not too hot on ourselves. I mean, I don't really care for a lot of the anime or video games that my stepkid plays. But that's fine. It's not hurting anybody. They're deriving a lot of enjoyment out of it. Who am I to get in the way of that? Why would I want to rob somebody of something that's giving them genuine happiness and joy? And this kind of comes back to the whole idea of the reaction videos. And I kind of want to say one thing, too, where, like, reaction videos tend to be where a lot of this hate and a lot of this just terrible attitude seems to be concentrated and I want to come out in defense of my friends who do reaction videos now personally I've never I, I think I've done one reaction video and it, it wasn't a very good one I I kind of did it like first thing in the morning before I've even had a coffee and it was it was a dream theater song and I, I didn't really do a good job of it frankly but I would love to do some reaction videos in the future. Obviously, I know a lot about prog and metal, so I wouldn't be doing a prog and metal reaction videos, but the one thing that kind of keeps me from doing it is, like, this mentality, I guess, of people just harping on people doing reactions and saying, like, you didn't react to it right, you, didn't un you don't understand this kind of music, you don't understand anything about it you ramble too much you stop the song in the wrong places you don't stop the song in the wrong place it's like just let people do things on their terms just let people enjoy things but also there is something about reaction videos that i love and i think anybody who is maybe starting to have their heart warmed a little bit by my you know, whole thing about, like, people will discover this music on their own terms, and they'll they'll grow to appreciate it with their own set of, I guess, morals, their own sort of worldview, etc., is that the big reason why I love reaction videos is when I look back on, you know, songs that are very important to me, and pieces of music that are very important to the prog rock community in general. You know, you're close to the edges, your 2112s, your Supper's Readies, Metropolis Part 1, you know, Octavarium. I could never listen to those songs for the first time again. Every single one of those songs is so far behind me now like i they're, they're so ingrained in my brain if you put a gun to my head and told me to beatbox mouth out and recite like sing every single note of rush's 2112 i could do it that might actually make a pretty fun video to be honest but i i can never hear that song for the first time again it's always past tense now but the the great thing about reaction videos is i can see the light in somebody's eyes the very first time they hear that 1812 overture part going into the smashing buildings going into the and the meek shall inherit the earth bit. Like, watching, like, the light in their eyes, like, just like, what is this? What am I encountering? Where is this going? 
I can never have that feeling again, but I can live it vicariously through them. I can watch their minds being blown when the church organ comes in in the in the I get up I get down section of close to the edge. I can watch the wheel spinning in their brain when the instrumental solo in Octavarium kicks into high gear and they're just like there's notes coming at me left and right. I don't know what's going on. I can never have those experiences again myself, but I can watch others share that experience. And I can remember when I was there, when I was in their position, hearing these amazing, life-altering pieces of music for the very first time. And it always, always warms my heart to see people just first discover this music and to watch it bring a genuine joy and wonder and passion into their lives. And and it's so funny because a lot of people kind of think that, like, this prog rock stuff is a big turnoff, and yet you look at some of these reaction channels and it's people who aren't normally into heavier rock music or people that don't really have experience with more complicated, longer songs. And you watch them, and they're always so impressed by what's going on. There's always so much, like, what is even happening in this song? And then by the end of something like Octavarium, they're pumping their fists in the air at the triumphant cadences in the music. Like, they're raring and ready to go. People like music that challenges them. People like music that makes them feel like they're going on a journey. You know... Even the most, like, hardened hip-hop or pop fans, if they give this prog rock music a chance, they love it. They, I, I have yet to see very many reaction videos, no matter how deep I go into watching people react to prog rock and heavy metal, I have yet to see very many where they were just openly turned off by everything they heard, where they were just like, this ain't for me, bud. There's not a whole lot of that. And I think that says something about our very special, very interesting genre of music, that people are willing to give it a chance. People are willing to listen to it, to hear what these artists who have been around for at this point well over half a century have to say and and when you're going on somebody's youtube channel to say like well you don't get it you weren't there man that just makes me so fucking mad like it makes me feel like you're not trying to encourage younger generations to appreciate what was so great about your time because let's face it from the the mindset of someone my age from the mindset of some libtard millennial like myself there's not a whole lot from the 60s and 70s that i would openly say was good but progressive rock was good was very good and why would we want to rob future generations of something so wonderful, something so mind-blowing, something so life-altering, something that gives such reliable and precious joy to people. But when you go on somebody's YouTube channel to say, you don't get it, you're too young to understand this music, you, you couldn't possibly know You're just trying to kill this music for everybody else. You're trying to make this music something that nobody wants to, anymore. And if in a hundred years nobody remembers bands like Gentle Giant or Yes or King Crimson, it's going to be your fault, not ours. Because we tried. We tried to come in and 
give it a chance. We, we tried, and we did, and a lot of us found ourselves really enjoying it. And when you discourage others from enjoying something that brings people joy and passion, you're just making... You're making a lot of problems for the music community. So, you know, that's just my thoughts on negative comments on progressive rock reaction videos. And just the general attitude that I find a lot of older progressive rock fans tend to have towards even our generation. Which, I'm sorry, like, we're young, but we're not super young. I'm nearly 40 years old myself there's music i listened to when i was growing up that the kids now consider dinosaur music you know <laughs> it's funny that my my stepkid considers lincoln park classic rock now but that's just the world we live in and the best that i can do is just make sure that uh future generations are happy with the world they live in Anyway, that was a bit of a rant, a bit of a ramble. I'm not even going to edit this. I'm not even going to put a bumper on the front or end. I'm just going to straight upload this to YouTube and we're going to call it a day. So uh, I hope you all enjoyed my rant. It was a bit of a long one. I wasn't expecting to go 16 and a half minutes, but here we are. Just like my favorite prog rock songs. Anyway, this is Long Words on Song Words, graciously out. Thank you.